know, we on South Side, we on Oakdale right now, you know. Infamous Oakdale Baker boys, you know what I'm saying, around here, so. Yeah, uh, this Grand Rappers, aka Gun Rule, aka Grand's Rule, aka Gun Clap City, man. It's uh, it's savage. Only reason why I say it's savage is because it's so small, man. Like, you go to these big cities, these guys can run to any side of town and hide from each other. Here, mm -hmm. you're gonna bump into them every day. You're gonna run into them at the grocery store, you're gonna run into them at the gas station, you're gonna run into them at the club. You know what I mean? So. It ain't no avoiding your beef. It's, you got here. You got to squash it right there. You know what I'm saying? Or it's gonna be an ongoing thing. Uh, so that's how the name Gun Rule came about. Yeah, man. Gun Rule, you know, was really originated by you know a lot of dark man. You know what I'm saying? Which was Wu Tang Clan. He's from here. Willie the Kid and them. They really uh, coined that. But you know them big bro them. So they kind of stuck. And you gotta work for it here. It's really not just like that. Everybody fucks with you, nah. A lot of niggas don't fuck with you because they see you doing bigger things and they want to put you down. They don't pass the ball, they just keep it to themselves. That's really what they be doing here. Grand Rapids is a good city, though. Like, some bad shit happen here, but it ain't bad like the mother city and shit. It's just a regular city. We don't really got no big things here. It's good to see, though. It's good to visit. You know what I'm saying? Well, you got poverty, man. You got problems. So mm -hmm. There's no escaping that. I don't care where you're from. Um, and the worse of the poverty, you know, the more violence it is, the more stealing is going on. Uh, I'm blessed in this area to where everybody's cool, you know, you know, everybody kind of look out for each other. And that's what you gotta do, you know, you just have your neighbors back, you have yours, if you see something crazy, they'll let you know. That's really all it is, and then you don't need the police to police your neighborhood all the time. Mm -hmm. But you gotta have control over yourself. You know what I'm saying? Then you gotta teach your brother the same thing. We try to get money. We ain't trying to be out here killing one another. It's not like a town for black people. Can you say this? I don't like to pull the race card to the certain. I would say urban. How about okay? You know urban. what I mean? Just to whoever in that urban circle. You know what I mean? Because it's hard for Mexicans. It's hard for. I'm actually half Cuban. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. my dad is a hundred percent Cuban, and it's a whole Latino uh, community as well. All, the whole West Side is pretty much Latino community, so it's rough on them as well. So I want to say just the urban inner city is not really built for us here. You know what I mean? It's against us. Uh, is it different from uh, Grand Rapids and other cities in uh, Michigan to you? Uh, not really. I mean, it's somewhat depends. Certain parts are worse. Mm. Like Flint, that's bad. Parts like that is bad. But like Grand Rapids, it's not really different besides the crime rates and shit like that. When the crack e epidemic happened, Grand Rapids was starting to look like Detroit. Mm -hmm. I mean, abandoned buildings, it was bad. It was really bad. And I got away from here. But when I came back, I seen that they had picked it back up. So, and it makes a difference. I mean, in the neighborhoods where the houses run down and it's crack up and down the street, people were different. Even good people. You know, they didn't want to come outside. They were scared. So, you know, that, that type of stuff, it has a, it, it does something to the people around it. And when you got to deal with that each and every day, man, it, it wears on you to where you, you know, you like a fuse. So that's what we see going on. You know, if the cop will pull somebody over, he tired anyway. He ain't done nothing wrong, and now he got to deal with this cop. In the streets, it's totally different. Like I got a lot of guys who uh, who went in when we was about 18, and you know they getting out now. Did about 10 years, and I'm letting them know as soon as they get out, like it's not the same streets out here right now. But I don't think it's just here, man. Honestly, I I, I am a religious guy. I'm a God fearing type of guy. I feel like we in our last days. You know what I mean? And our last days could be 20 years. You know what I mean? I don't mean that the world's gonna end tomorrow. I just mean we are incurring in our last days right now, so the whole world is changing. The streets ain't the same nowhere, you know what I mean? So you just got to adapt and do what you can do out of your own power to the best of your ability, and that's all I try to do. That's all my team try to do, anybody I work with try to do. So you say uh, like putting playgrounds and after school programs, like what you feel like the city missing the most? Well, I know there was a big cut with schools, so anytime you cut there, uh, I think you're making a big mistake, because that's just way too important. But on the same, there has to be some changes in school. 
because I remember coming up through school and a lot of stuff about our history is just not there and it's not being told and it's not being told correctly and so you know we got to gather together with the parents and parents with the teachers, teachers with the principal and we got to change this. The system is one-sided. People can argue with it but it is you know. Now I think every man has to you know, you're going to have to dig deep and uh, figure it out, and uh, that's the only way you're going to get it, because they ain't going to get you nothing. Mm -hmm. But you know and understand there's a system that's set up that uh, will lift another one up a little higher than it will you. For some reason, I just fought finally the calling for a black man to bring other black men together in unity amongst the community. You know what I mean? So. That's just like my calling. Like I'm actually working with some big guys around the city right now. They're doing a unity picnic. We uh we're gonna do a picnic, and um I'm kind of like hosting the whole thing, you know, showing love for the city. And it's, I'm a powerful person in the community right now. I'm the voice for the people. So I just want to spread awareness to whatever issues that we got, man, and just you know get on. Uh, and, uh, actually, at the same time, I don't, I don't like to do a lot of talking. Like you get a lot of these. All lives matter, Black Lives Matter movements mm -hmm. going on, and all they doing is sobbing and crying and coming together crying. Me, I'm more of a walker. Like I'm trying to sign some petitions, you know, reach out to my Black lawyer friends and and and, and get some boycotts going on, get some actual action going on. So I I see you got that Trump shirt on. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? It's crazy because on my Instagram. I'm getting a lot of flack because the Floyd Mayweather Pacquiao fight. Me and my my brother's a pro boxer, by the way, by the kid name of Kid Chocolate. Uh, we went to the last Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao fight, and we actually sat in front of Donald Trump. You know, so I got a bunch of selfies with him. This is before all the election stuff, before anybody know anything. So I'm all cheesy face. I took like two nice flicks with him, posted them, and got love for him until all this stuff started going on. Now I'm like. Seeing old comments on the picture popping up like this guy, what is wrong with you, this and that. So I do stuff like this. It's not that I'm trying to seek attention or that I purposely support Donald Trump. It's that I like to play the devil's advocate. I like to piss people out. I like to people to straighten their uh, reason and why they supporting people. Mm -hmm. If you support Hillary, why? Don't just support it because what you offended by what Donald Trump says. You know what I mean? So when I run into people in the street, and they get angry, I ask them why. Have a solid reason, that's all it is. For those who don't know, Shetty has been a working up and coming artist out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. He's a grinder, he has multiple businesses, he don't just do music. But you know, I just wanted to make sure that he, uh, he got an opportunity to come up to the station because he's, he's a part of the community. He's not just an artist, but he's a part of the community. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for a long time, man. You know, everything I'm getting now is overdue to me. I'm, I'm still got a long ways to go, but I've been making progress. We've been moving forward. My team is solid. Mm -hmm. We marketing. We, we crunching. You know what I'm saying? I got Chris as my assistant, slash my role manager, slash whatever hat he need to wear. You know what I mean? Whatever he need to be doing, he getting it done. Chris get it done. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a strong, solid marketing team right now. We attacking every avenue, and we just uh, our last uh, project was our first official with with everybody moving synchronized, and we seen good results. So this next project, we know what we gonna do to take it up a notch. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, that that uh, that actually kind of brought me to a level, another level, whether people believe it or not, because you got your naysayers and your haters and of all course. that. Of course, that comes with Uncle Murder. I ain't popping over here. That's a New York dude and all yeah. that. With regards to that, man, we did numbers on World Star. That's right. Did numbers on YouTube, and my clout went up from that. That's I started right. getting That's phone calls That's and right. bookings, and That's right. you know what I mean. Like the more we do, we can see it. We can be able to track the activity because we see the results. They they hitting us up. But it yeah. goes back you know to what you said in the beginning. Real recognize real man, and 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 when one real guy got an opportunity and he can spread it. He gonna pass it on because that's what that's only need. right. Yeah, that's what or else you blocking need. your blessings. You know, no question. You blessed to bless. I want to let you know when you listen to my music, man. Expect to hear realness, authenticity. You know, I'm not trying to sound like nobody. And if you don't like it, you know, buy another CD and like that music. You know what I mean? I mean, it's catered specifically for the audience that I'm making it for. So either you like it or you hate it. You know what I'm saying? pretty much all over the United States right now as far as uh, 
you know, the places that we've played and people who know about us. Um, we got our ASCAP all together. Um, we just started our own publishing company. So it's just little things like that to where it's like, okay, when things do pop off, you're already ready, you set up, you're prepared to get money. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you ain't got to go through all that, that BS that, you know, they'll tie you up in the game. You know, because it's the music industry and they're trying to buy low and sell high. So, you know, once you learn the game, then you prepare yourself and then when it does happen, you're ready to go. They can't deny you your bread. So, but uh, we're just knocking out uh, some features. We, uh, we're doing something with uh, one of Shady Records artists. I ain't going to say his name right now, but we're working on that now. That's going to be speed. Uh, we're getting ready to go down to, uh, we're going to go to California and shoot a Razzcast video, so that's going to be nice. And then we're going to be in New York for uh, Labor Day for a show with uh, some of the Wu-Tang Clan members. So, okay. so we're keeping busy, man. It's, it's been a really good year for us. So. But hopefully the Fist Coalition will be remembered for what it is, that Fist. It is power. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And every person got it. So if you exercise your power, you can get anything done. And that's what we got to start focusing on is trying to make things better. My number one goal is to uh, at least get known. Like, people always be like, well, I'm going to take over, I'm going to get big. If you can't even take over your city, you definitely aren't going to be able to take over other cities. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can be able to take over every city. You got to take over your own first. And once everybody knows you're here, you got to move up from there. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to take this stuff over, but you ain't even taking over your city. Exactly. You got to do that first. That's your first step. But after I do that, then I plan to do bigger things. You know what I'm saying? Get signed. Just do me. We different, man. We don't really don't be talking about killing and shit. We got a few songs that talk about like the struggle and the hustle and shit mm -hmm. and like shit like that. But we just make different music. We like make like how can I explain this? Turned up music, but not really like turned up drill music. Just turned up for everybody. Anybody can relate to it. It's not no one person. Really, anybody can listen to our music. Like man, I fuck with this because it's different than everybody else. And the main thing is that we talk about the shit we do. We don't fucking sit there and make music and don't talk about shit we do, you know what I'm saying? We gonna talk about everything we did and like, we don't talk about that fake shit. I mean, some people really do be faking, I'm not gonna lie. Some people from here really don't be doing that shit. They just talk about it. But like, if actually something happened, they're not gonna be on it because they never did it. They just talk about it because they see other people talking about it. Like I said, people wanna copy Chicago rappers and Atlanta rappers and we need to be our own self. That's, mm -hmm. let them do their drill shit, let Atlanta do their shit. Let us make our own shit. That's what they be doing, they be copying other people's shit. Just do your own shit. That's how you stand out. That's how these artists maybe like, oh, how they be making it? Because they stand out. They do their own shit. They don't copy anybody else. They got their own style. If you think about it, one of my favorite artists is Lil Yachty. He don't sound like nobody else. He do his own shit. He have fun with it. You know what I'm saying? He ain't like everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm, That's really it. You just got to be yourself.